five, seven minutes. Like this week's Sedra contains a very moving and a dramatic farewell address of Moshe Rabbeinu to the Klal Yisrael. He bids farewell to the Klal Yisrael. Vayikra, Vayikra Moshe Yoshua. Moshe Rabbeinu he called, he summoned Yoshua. He dresses Yeshua in the presence of the entire Klal Yisrael and he tells him Chazak be a must. He says be strength, be strong and have confidence because your job is you have to bring the Klal Yisrael into Israel and and you have to through you they're going to Yashin Eretz Yisrael. The Moshe Rabbeinu used the expression to to, to Yeshua, his successor, used uh, used the expression Chazak Yamas. It seems that Yeshua needed some to be strengthened. He needed more confidence. He had anxieties. Uh, so. Uh, Ramon uh, Steinman asks a very, very um, uh, 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 imposing question. He said, there, if he was had anxiety and his, he was filled with, with fright, and he has to take over the leadership and bring the Pleiades from there to Israel, what words of confidence could Moshe add to, to Yeshua? That their brothers themselves promised him, told them that the father shall you'll take them into the soul. What more? What stronger presentation? More drama? What can be more than uh, more forceful than the brothers themselves ad addressing him and and giving him that that encouragement? So he says, from this we learn that no matter who the person is. No matter what the situation is, any words, kind words, words of encouragement, support, can go a long, long way. So much so that Moshe felt that even though the Rebunifam had already given everything he could to fill his heart with courage and he should go, he should go forward courageously, it's still Moshe Rabbeinu, whatever he could add, is definitely would would make his task even not as forbidding, and he would face the future with more confidence. There's a very to illustrate it's a very beautiful story. The uh, in Eretz Yisrael, a, a very very world renowned therapist came no knocking on the door of a yeshiva man, yeshiva student, and uh, he, he was very puzzled. To receive a visit from the, uh, from such a, a famous, uh, prestigious, uh, renowned therapist, and what made him even more puzzled when he said to him, he said, "I came all the way," he says, "from all from my office way, this about a distance away," he says, "to come to thank you." So he says, the "Doctor," he says, "you must be mistaken." He said, "We never met before in my life." And I can't imagine what in the world you could thank me for. So he said, I'll tell you what. He says, you did in 30 seconds what I failed to do in six months. He said, uh, I, uh, there was a, a mishpoche, a Mati Kohn and his wife, they were having serious, serious marital problems. And they were on the verge of, they were separated on the verge of divorce. And uh, you are in shul, and at the end of the davening, you happen to notice Mati Kohn's son, and you said to him, oh, that's your son. Oh, he davened so beautifully. It must make you very, very proud. Just those few words. He took the time to say those few words to this, to this Mati. It turned everything around. He went, he did something he never did for years. He went and he brought flowers, brought it to his wife, and it, 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 they began working very hard at reconciliation, and now they're both happy back together again. He said, normally I wouldn't be permitted to tell you, to, to disclose all of this, 
but uh, that they told me they're so grateful to you. So go now, we, we don't know what, what, where, when, a good word for them to north, how far it goes, but at the same token, let me thank everybody here for the support and the encouragement and being behind us all these years. Uh, it made a, made a tremendous difference. Uh, I, uh, we're, uh, we're always Baruch Hashem, we're able to accomplish it. It's all because of everybody behind us, both, both morally and financially, and we're, we're always short the bank. But the, the officers in the bank, they know that we're, we have integrity. If I tell them that to cover the check, the synagogue check, I said by tomorrow 12 o'clock I'll have the funds. It never fails and we take care of it. So, but one, one of the officers, Tagoy Shikov, I couldn't, uh, I called, I said we're short this morning. I said, you please cover the check and I'll be it tomorrow. She says, you know, you have a history. She says, it's habitual. He says, your, your, your synagogue account is always short. He says, you're doing something wrong. You don't really manage right. I said, well, I'll tell you the truth. The way we look at it is if a synagogue, a house of study, and a house of prayer is not short, they're not doing their job. They're doing something wrong. She said, well, I said, well, you know, you have to be more worldly, she says. She says, you can't just sit and write checks. You don't have money in the bank. I said, I never thought of that. My goodness gracious, thank you for information. Mm -hmm. so she said, well, let me tell you further. She said, because you're a rabbi, I know you for many years. She said, come in, let me tell you something. We have here in the same bank an account from a neighboring temple. He said, they never have problems, they manage. Why is that? She said, then they have, between you and me, they always have a, a substantial balance. So I said, I'll tell you, uh, uh, Karen. I said, their bank account is full, but their synagogue is empty. Mm -hmm. Our bank account is empty, but our synagogue is full. Funny, but I can't show him there. Let's have a go to Zaki, he says, Israel. The thing of Herland, Peter, and this way. Remember, I'm going to call it my secret. Yahoo, Peter, and Yahoo. Thank you.